Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And today we are following up on Erin's video where she talked about her essential whiskey collection and we are covering my essential whiskey collection. The bare minimum of bottles that I would want if we didn't have a channel. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. As we said in the intro, we are talking about what my essential whiskey collection would be, and more importantly, why the choices that I make might matter to you. But before we get into that, got to get into the first sip mm -hmm. where we select something completely at random out of our single sample pool and taste it totally blind. And we've never had anything in that pool before, so we'd have no familiarity with it. You're getting our opinions without any labels or hype or even recency bias from having tried it at any point in time. So yep. let's get into it. All right. Cheers. I'm being honest, I'm not getting a whole lot on this other than some ethanol and like your typical bourbon smells. Okay, I can get your typical bourbon smells. I'm not getting a lot of ethanol. I'm getting a lot of richness. It's like really rich. It smells like it's going to be creamy on the palate. It's viscous, kind of fluffy on the nose. It is fruit forward, but almost like more of like a, um, what are the things called? Like a creamy fruity thing i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> okay i'm sorry i probably don't either <laughs> let's get it on the palate not fruity a little sharp yeah it there is some sharpness there it is as i said it is oily and viscous on the palate there's a lot of concentration of flavor it's a tempered sweetness it is kind of fruity forward classic bourbon but with like a more of a fruit forward profile to it. Why Let's get how one more are you sip. getting all this? I'm like not just, getting any of that. Well, the mouthfeel is the mouthfeel. It is what it is. It's it's kind of oily. It's definitely not dark in flavor profile. It's not like a candy bar. It's more like a candy sweetness, mm. like a, a sugary candy sweetness, but it's it's syrupy almost. Let's get a normal sip. There's something about it. It hits me up front. It's like kind of popsicle sticky, kind of band-aid-y, but Kind of eraser y, I mean, not band aid y, eraser y. Of that list, I can go popsicle stick. The second sip right there, I'm getting a lot more oak. I'm getting a lot of barrel char. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of barrel char on this, which I think to you comes across like pencil eraser for some reason. It's just the way that it hits your palate. <laughs> yeah. We are going to grade this thing on nose, flavor, and experience. And then we'll talk about some of the real world metrics once we find out what it is. But let's get into one more sip before we give this thing some ratings. Okay. I stand by it. Pencil eraser, a little bit, and popsicle stick. I see you on that. I do. It's To me, it's like dark fruit, dark barrel char. The proof doesn't seem to be too high. It's drinking really concentrated sweetness. It's a good pour. Where are you at on nose flavor and experience? Um, I'm going to give it just okay on nose and just okay on flavor. I'm just okay on experience. Right. I'm not, okay. Yeah. Like, it's not off putting, but I don't like it. It's kind of burning still. Yeah. I could tell mm -hmm. when I said it's not the pour for you. Yeah. Like it's not something you're going to gravitate mm -hmm. towards. For me, I'm going to give it thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, thumbs up on the experience. If the barrel char wasn't so heavy on it, I would probably go closer to two thumbs up on flavor. Oh, wow. And if it were a little bit more balanced, I would go more closer to two thumbs up on experience okay. because it is oily. It is viscous. The finish does stick around. Those are all things I look for, but it's just a little bit out of balance for me to mm. fully fall in love with this glass. But I really do like it. I would enjoy having a bottle of it. I hope the price point is pretty good and it's fairly readily available around the $60 mark. Let's find out what we've been sipping. This is Knob Creek Cask Strength Rye. Wow. <laughs> wow. I thought it was a bourbon. Okay, so much more is making sense now. So Knob Creek Ryes are very sweet, and we actually have a video coming up in a few weeks of seven ryes for the bourbon drinker mm. just like to check out. So that's going to be uh, an interesting video, and this particular one won't be on it because this is a very limited release mm. item. Okay. But... Boy, this comes across with some oomph. It's a it hundred and I can't even read my own writing. I think it's 119.6 proof. Yeah, that's what it looks yeah. like. I think this product came out in like 2009. It's I think an 11 year 
cash strength rye from Mouth Creek. I thought it was kind of high-ish proof because it's yeah. it's got heat. I said it has heat. And yeah. when it has heat, for me, that's a, like a notation of a, it's a little higher proof than you might think. Yeah. The barrel char on this thing is bananas. Now that we know it's a rye, let's take one more sip and see if there's anything else we have to say about it. It's not the rye for me. It is for me. Yeah. That's fair. It is. So the 100 proof Knob Creek rye is almost cocktail-esque. We've had mm -hmm. it on a first sip before and it came across like with a ton of orange, it's like citrus sweetness. This has that. The rye spice is there, but it's kind of in the background from that fruity citrusy sweetness that I was picking up on. It is very syrupy. There's a lot of barrel char. It's a great experience. It's however, on the retail side of the equation, as far as price availability goes, I think it was about 70 bucks when it was available, okay. but it was a one-time release item. So, and it's never coming back again. Probably not. Oh. So that's going to be a thumbs down on retail, but as consumers for 70 bucks, I mean, you already said you didn't really like it. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're not going to be buying it no. as a consumer for me. It's definitely a thumbs up buy. Honestly, the fact that it is such a limited release item, it would probably go two thumbs up for me on. You gotta fight that FOMO. But the good news is that there's 115 proof Knob Creek store picks that if you're in a market that gets store picks, they're flush around here. We got plenty of Knob Creek 115 proof rye store picks that those are great as well. At least check them out if you like what I said about this glass. If you're more on Aaron's page, obviously don't worry about it. But if you're a bourbon drinker who does enjoy rye, but don't like the really rye forward ryes, then this is something you should absolutely check out. And you should also check out the video description below for a link to our Patreon. If you like what you see on this channel, because that's our interactive element of the channel where you can get plugged in. You can catch two additional episodes every week in our bonus content tier. We do blind flights, sample shares and giveaways with our Patreon members over there. And we have our online community, all kinds of stuff. Yep. Check that out down below. Yep. And if you like the shirt Josh is wearing, you can get it at stuffandwhiskey.com. We've got this in white, another version of this in black, other t-shirts, hats, drinkware, all kinds of things. And there will be more stuff coming soon. Yeah. It's, but you should check it out. It's almost like a website full of stuff. <laughs> For whiskey drinkers. Yeah. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> all right, let's get this stuff out of the way okay. and talk about my essential whiskey right. collection. I can't wait to get and into this. So asking Josh to boil down anything to the bare essentials is a task. It's hard. So I'm very proud of you that you did this. Thank you. I'm very proud of you that you, you only have 14 bottles, which yeah. blows my mind. I, I knew you were going to have more. <laughs> yeah. So there okay. you go. So as we said last week during your video, this is predicated on what our essential collection would be if we we're gonna have everything we needed and nothing we didn't. Now, would I want more than 14 bottles? Sure. Mm -hmm. But if I were gonna strip it down to the bare minimum and I was trying to be, uh, what's the word? Like, if I was trying to be frugal, frugal or space conscious or, you know, just mindful. Or you just don't wanna spend all of your money right. on whiskey, you maybe you budget reasons. Right. Yeah, frugal. Now, this is predicated also on the fact that I am taking hype and availability and all that out of the equation in my list. Okay. For Aaron's list, she didn't take that into account. For me, there are going to be some bottles in here that are hyped up, but if they're in here and they're hyped up, it's because I actually really like oh, them, okay. not just because they're hyped up. I didn't take that into account because I don't know what's hyped up. Well, and everything you had everything you had was available. So oh. if you're into available whiskeys, especially if you like rice, go check out Aaron's video yeah. from last week. My video is going to be bourbon heavy cuz mm -hmm. I'm more of the bourbon guy, mm -hmm. but we're going to have some other things in there as well. So I just wanted to preface that though with the hype uh asterisk. Anything I have on here is on here because I actually think it tastes good and I've learned that through blind tastings. This whole list is informed by blind tastings. Yeah, so, and this is stuff that you would spend, if we didn't have a channel yeah. at all, you would still spend your money on it, yeah. whether it's hyped up or not. Correct. Yeah. So we'll walk through this. There's a theme to it. And first and foremost, just like in Aaron's video, I do like international whiskey from time to time. Yeah, and we're just getting into it too. So yeah. this- Well, yeah. I've I've been going to restaurants for special occasions and ordering like Macallan pours for but a long time. In but general, yeah. we're, we're dipping our toes into the international waters. Yeah. Trying a large scope of products, especially with one of these bottles, is a totally new category for us that we found out that we love. There's a lot of glass over here. Things might clink in this video. So Irish is a category 
that I've found that I really like, as well as peated scotch. I actually find that regular non-peated scotch isn't exactly my forte. Yeah. If I want Same. the scotchy flavors, I tend to just gravitate straight towards the peat, or if I want the maltiness that scotch offers, then I tend to gravitate towards Irish mm -hmm. because it has the fruitiness and the maltiness, but without the smokiness. So, and if you've seen my video, these might look familiar to you. Yeah. <laughs> so Powers John's Lane, you know, green spot or yellow spot would have been the bottle to put in this place had we not tried this, but having tried this and we did just on our own time, we sat down and had a blind between this yellow spot and green spot. And this had all the fruit forward elements of green spot that we loved with all the deeper, darker notes of yellow spot. And it's readily available and about the same price as green spot. And we actually liked it better than both of those. So Powers John's Lane for 70 bucks and readily available gains a spot on our shelf. Ardbeg Oogdale, man, for a peated scotch, like I love this stuff. It's good. As I said last week, there's a fruity core to it. And then that's surrounded by like a campfire smoke or like a wood smoke, mm -hmm. not the band-aid iodine -y medicinal smoke that you can get on some peated scotches. This stuff is phenomenal for 70 or 80 bucks a bottle. I was like thinking my birthday's coming up, or I guess at the time you're seeing this, it actually may have just passed, but I was, we have a bottle of this, but this is like, this is a birthday bottle to me. Yeah. Like I love this stuff. So I, I can't say enough about this and I never would have even tried peated scotch had it not been for our friend, Eric David Gunderson, mm -hmm. giving us some samples and he gifted that bottle to us as well. He did. But and that's going to be- And the Powers John's Lane. Yeah. That's, he, he actually gave the Powers John's yeah, Lane to that was, me. That was to you. Yeah. <laughs> and I hid it from John. She hid it from me because I liked it so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's get into the core of my collection and I tend to be a situational drinker. So I tend to think what proof point do I want? What flavor profile do I want? And then I pick a bottle based on that. So I have my lower proof pours, my medium proof pours, and my higher proof pours here in this list. And then in each of those categories, I have a more sweet choice, something that's a little bit darker in flavor profile and one rye which I'm sure you will be happy to I, hear. I do appreciate I'm that. I'm coming around on rise. So I'm for bringing my, him to the dark side. Yeah. So for my low proof, you're not going to see below 100 proof here. I really like more proof and yeah. more flavor. And as far as this list goes, availability aside, these are the pours I would have. So for a sweet fruit forward pour, oh. it's going to be 1792 bottled and bond at 100 proof. For a little bit more deeper, darker richness, it's going to be smoke wagon small batch. Mm. This stuff flat out impresses me. It's good. Especially it in good. blinds. It's so good. I would rather have this than like E.H. Taylor, small batch, even single barrel. Love this stuff. It is fantastic. You're seeing the clear bottle, which was a short period of time where they ran out of this dark amber glass. But I like the clear bottle so much and I wish they went back to it. I like the amber glass. I know you do and most people do and they switch back to it. This was only because they ran out of this, but I will actually buy these and pour them into this because I like the clear bottle <laughs> I didn't know so that. much. So I <laughs> love this stuff. And then for my low proof rye, it's going to be Russell's single barrel coming in at 104 proof. This stuff is so good. We have had it as like a control pour in flights that have had much more allocated rise mm -hmm. and it was my favorite. Yeah. I mean, we're big wild turkey fans. The rye is no exception. This stuff is sweet caramel forward for a rye. All those dill and herbal spices that you get in rye sometimes take a back seat in this pour. And I just absolutely It's a bourbon it. drinker's rye for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we can clear these out. Okay. We're gonna go into our next category, which is the medium proof point, which for me is in the one teens range. So again, sweet forward, darker flavor profile, and then a rye in that range. So for me, surprise, surprise. I've seen this bottle before. Another smoke wagon <laughs> product. And you're gonna see some pretty specific themes in this video related to Barton, uh, smoke wagon and MGP and wild turkey. For whatever reason, I feel like the smoke wagon small batches are a little bit darker in flavor okay. and have the oak balanced in a little bit more. I think Aaron from a Aaron from Nevada Distilling <laughs> and Smoke Wagon has said for the uncuts, he tries to blend them to be a little less oaky and a little bit more fruit forward. And that's certainly been my experience. Mm -hmm. So this is my higher proof pour. 
for or the medium proof pour and then rare breed for the bourbon and rare breed rye for the rye so for a medium proof i'm point, not mad at it yeah <laughs> this is when i want max flavor and a super enjoyable experience but i don't want my face totally blown off with proof mm -hmm. this is honestly my wheelhouse this mm -hmm. is where i live and if you made me pick three bottles instead of 14 you're looking at the three oh, bottles wow. that I would pick. So, and honestly, each of your, your whole capsule collection can be broken up into, I'll call them modules. Yeah. Like this is your medium proof module right. and your lower proof module. Yep, so, exactly. Yeah. So absolutely love these products. I, I mean, I don't know what we could say more about rare yeah. breed on here. We're, we're if, rare breed fans. If, it, you if you're new to the channel in blind tastings, especially it just completely blows us away, but it's dark, it's rich, it's sweet. And then the rare breed rye to me is like a boozy honey tea. It's good. Like a honey lemon tea vibe to it. It's so good. It so. almost made my capsule collection. Like yeah. it's an honorable mention in my capsule collection because I'm very much like cut what I can cut and oh, it's so good though. Now moving on to the higher proof stuff. Okay. We're talking about 120 or more proof, big flavor, big spice, very bold on the palate. And again, sweet, dark and rye. So for the sweet category, you're gonna see a real hyped up bottle here, Stag Junior. I really like Stag Junior, um, and now it's not even Stag Junior anymore. It's just Stag, or oh, really? they're doing single barrel picks or whatever they're doing oh. with it. TBD as far as what's going on with this bottle in the long run. But this is one of the absolute few products from Buffalo Trace that I think is actually really good like in blind tastings blows me away all the wellers let me down pretty consistently all the lower proof stuff lets me down especially blanton's and eh or elmer t lee let me down pretty consistently but this product has never let me down it's always some variation of great to flat out exceptional and okay. i hate what they're going for on secondary and in price gouging stores that mark up a ton but for retail at $60 or $100 in that range, this is a fantastic bottle and so hard to beat if you want big proof and a lot of sweetness. With that said, I do tend to lean towards a darker flavor profile. Yeah. All these sweet pours are more like sweet candy mm -hmm. and all these darker pours are more like chocolate candy bars. And the fat kid in me loves chocolate candy bars more than he likes sweet candy. So. If you want to know which I prefer in all these, it's always going to be the darker pour. Okay. So for me, Knob Creek 120 proof single barrels, particularly store picks or group picks are, it's it just doesn't get any better than that. And I know that the bottle that should go here for almost everybody talking about this category is Elijah Craig barrel proof. And I really do like Elijah Craig barrel proof, but I like this stuff more. That's just all there is to and it. And you know what? You can't deny that. Right. And I I think Elijah Craig Barrel Proof on balance is a more um, consistent product. Okay. I think there's more consistency between the batches, even though those can vary. But these single barrels, there are some that are really like peanut buttery and nut forward. And I don't like those quite as much. But the ones that have a really prominent black cherry note mm. and kind of a milk chocolate vibe to them, it just doesn't get any better. And most of these now are coming down in years, but they're nine and a half, 10 years old. Elijah Craig barrel proof, single barrel store picks are eight to 10 years old. So it's still kind of in the same wheelhouse. Yeah. And these are much easier to find in our market, much cheaper. And I like the flavors better. There you go. Now for a rye in the high proof category, this is tricky. Okay. If this is my absolute no holds barred, minimal collection yep. the answer is gonna oh. be jack daniels special limited what, what do they call it single uh barrel? special release special release single barrel barrel proof rye interesting this stuff is unreal yeah but it was a one-time release other than the fact that we live in tennessee and you can get the little tennessee tasters for 50 bucks or 60 if you can find them the, even those are gone from our market mm -hmm. so this isn't really a realistic bottle to have on the list but it is one that I want to always have around. Yeah. If I can't get this though. Always being relative if you can't get it anymore. If I can't get it, it's going to be MGP Rye. This one in particular from Natural Barrel Company is a single barrel, mm -hmm. just like the Jack was a single barrel. Um, but this stuff is really good. 
Some of them are a little bit more like dill pickly or herbal or floral or Mm -hmm. black licorice. And I steer away from all those notes on a personal level. But if I can try it before I buy it, if it's an MGP ride, that's a store pick or a group pick and I can, I can sample it before I spend money on it. Then this takes the cake for high proof rye. This particular one is an eight year rye. That's 115.66 proof. And it is so candy sweet. Mm -hmm. Like you might as well just stuff your mouth full of Jolly Ranchers and then take a swig of really high proof bourbon. You honestly might as well, yeah, put a bunch of green Jolly Ranchers in your mouth and then take a drink of this straight from the bottle. And that's what this gives you. (laughs) Okay. So I really like this stuff for my high proof rye option. Now we are near the end of the list. That's actually my three modules, but we have to cover a few more bases that are important to cover if you ask me. So I'm nervous now. So first up, these are all bourbons and ryes that I would just want to sit by themselves. Okay. I don't want to mix any of these because they're just too good, too high okay. quality. So okay. I want something that is inexpensive to make boulevardiers with mm. or mix up with some like unsweet Arnold Palmers on a hot summer day or okay. something like that. And as far as the money goes, you can't do any better as far as I'm concerned than early times bottled and bond. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing about this product is, is that I wanted a bottle for this category that is good enough to be sipped by itself. Yeah, it's and, a mixer, but also could be sipped neat. Right, yeah. and for th- about $30, 25 to $30 for a liter in our market, it doesn't get any better. I love Wild Turkey, but I like this stuff better than Wild Turkey 101. I love Heaven Hill and all their bourbons, but I love this stuff more than any Evan Williams offering. Mm. This stuff is... Those, that's a big statement you just I said. I mean, in blind tastings, I've said that I would pay 50 bucks for this product before. So, <laughs> and it's about half of that if you break it down to a 750 milliliter bottle cost. This is the metal capped Sazerac owned version. There's a lot of consternation around this topic. There is. And I want to be real clear. We have a Brown Foreman bottle and we really enjoyed it Mm -hmm. and when all the the debate started coming out about this bottle we went and got one and right off the fresh crack we poured ourselves a blind and one was so much more dark and viscous and caramel and vanilla forward and rich which is totally up your alley right yeah and i thought it had to be the old one and i looked and sure enough it was this bottling it was the new bottling and then I was so surprised and thought I might have mixed the glasses up that I did it again and, and you, I picked this one and again. And you also made me do it. Yes, and you picked this one as well. It yeah. was pretty clear cut, but it wasn't, they weren't miles apart. So the thing is, is that Sazerac bought early times. Any difference you're getting between bottlings is probably going to be more due to flavor drift than anything else. So don't sweat that too much. This is a fantastic product still. Doesn't matter if Sazerac's bottling it at least for a while. Mm -hmm. Bottled and Bond almost ensures that it's gonna be a few years before any of their product gets in the bottles. They're buying old existing stock. Gotcha. So you can't go wrong with this as a cheap inexpensive mixer that's still good enough to be sipped on its own. Two more categories and then we're done. I would always have a rotating single barrel pick. Yeah, Yeah. you like single barrels. That's a fun thing for you to try a new single barrel store pick specifically. It it keeps it interesting. It keeps it fun. It gives me something to be out there hunting for that's actually accessible rather than some of the hyped up stuff. Mm -hmm. Like for you people who love Weller and Blanton's and stuff like that, more power to you. I don't think it's worth the hype, but I feel bad because you're searching for a product that you just can't really Mm -hmm. find all that well. So. You know, if you go for single barrels, you can get your hands on some of those. Some of my favorite single barrels out there, period, are New Riff single barrel barrel proof picks. Mm -hmm. I like the regular shelf offering as well. So if you can't find a pick, I would just buy a New Riff single barrel. Russell's picks, although these are getting much harder to find and people are starting to flip these on secondary Um. for gouged prices and it's making me incredibly angry, but that's another story for another day. And maker's mark picks these can vary so much and in particular for some reason not only are these good to sit by themselves one of the few weeded products i actually really enjoy but they're so good on ice i don't know what it Mm. is about makers on ice it gets so like syrupy and creamy and good so like this is something that i'm going to reach for on a hot summer day throw in a glass over a big cube of ice and enjoy so gotta have a single barrel in the collection always these three just happen to be what i'm looking out for keen eyes will also notice that so these three could be one 
It's a it's a category. Okay. Yeah. Keen eyes will also notice that the Russell's Rye was a single barrel. I'm looking over here. The actually the 1792 bottled and bond I showed was a store pick that was a single barrel, and uh, the Knob Creek was a single barrel. So you like I like single barrels. You like single barrels. You that's kind of where the gamification yeah. comes in for you, correct? As opposed to hunting, you gamify it by trying different single barrels, correct? And, and my, store picks. In my last category is going to be a special occasion pour. I like to have a bottle around for special occasions. Not something I'm gonna dip into very often. Don't want my face blown away. I just want something that's just really good, super, super enjoyable. And for me, that's any well-aged Barton 1792 okay. products. So this is 1792 12 year, and this is Sam Houston 14, but we've had Sam Houston 15s, we've had Calumet 15s. This is Barton sourced liquid. But honestly, this 1792 12 years, age 12 years, would be the choice for me. It's just so hard to find. We actually mm -hmm. had to get this from our friend at state. Thank you, Barry, for hooking us up with this. But this is what we can get in our market. And man, it's this stuff is so creamy and so vanilla forward for me on a consistent basis. I just absolutely love it. And when I want something that's just super enjoyable for a special occasion, mm -hmm these are what I'm reaching for. There's other bottles that were in the lineup that I would actually reach for on special occasions as well, but- These are like dedicated special- Dedicated occasions. special yeah. occasion bottles. So absolutely love these products. So yeah, that is my capsule whiskey collection. That's 14 bottles. If you include the categories like the store picks and the special occasion being well-aged Barton as, yeah. you know, as a bottle count, but you know, maybe it was a little more than 14, but whatever. Jeff <laughs> always sneaks in. I told him, I was like, you're going to do some honorable mentions. He's yeah. like, no, I won't. But I'm, you still found yeah. a way to sneak in I'm more. A, I'm a habitual line stepper. You so. are. <laughs> All right. For our other stuff this week, if you're interested in whiskeys that I like and you kind of connected with some of the things I was saying about some of the bottles that I chose for my capsule whiskey collection, then I'm going to put a video or not a video link. I'm going to put a link in the video description below to something I've been working on off the channel just for fun for myself. And it is a blind barrel proof bracket where I have through the channel and generous friends who have given samples of some really crazy, highly allocated mm -hmm. pours, including King of Kentucky, Booker's Rye, George T. Stagg, all kinds of stuff like that, Thomas H. Handy. I've paired every one of those things up with an available product and built a 12 matchup bracket that I've been working through. Mm -hmm. Here's the kicker though, the available products and the allocated products are going head to head in the first round of every single one. Mm -hmm. I only get two sips of each one. Erin's pouring them and then she, I put the pool together and then she's taken over from there. Mm -hmm. She pours me enough to have two sips of each one. And honestly, if some of these hyped up products are as good as everybody says they are on whiskey tube and in reviews and things like that, they ought to stand out as being pretty special, even off of one or two sips right from the bat. So I'm working my way through this thing. And all of this information is in my nerdy way, collected in a Google document that you can go and look at. And by the time I'm showing you this or talking about it, we're done. We'll have finished. We yeah. have finished it. I don't know how it ends yet because we're only halfway through it. But by the time this video comes out, we'll, we'll be, be completed. So maybe the maybe some of this unreal stuff does stand up as the best stuff ever but maybe some of your favorites might fall or some of the hyped up stuff might fall. So it's worth checking out. If you want to get a little whiskey nerdy with me, check it out in the video description below. While you're down there, you can also find our email address at stuffandwhiskey at gmail.com. That's where you can get in touch with us if you need to, and you can get plugged in on what we do here on the channel, which is if you're going to watch, we're going to use that for something. Mm -hmm. And every October we do a charity fundraiser live stream for mental health. So if you want to be part of that, you want to get plugged in, maybe donate a bottle to help raise money for a good cause. Last year we did $15,000 thanks to the help of this community. Yes. And this year we're hoping to maybe double that or even do better. So hit us up down there below if you want more information. I think that's it for this week. That's it. Yeah. Till next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world. <laughs> That phrase always try, ties up my tongue. It's tough. You think we'd be better at it by now? Real world. Yeah. You also think we'd be better at whiskey tasting by Real now? Real world. Unique New York. Unique New York. Mm -hmm.